I'm Tim Herrera with the Sacramento County Office of Education here with another Teacher of the Year profile. We're speaking with Svetlana Popov, who is one of two Teachers of the Year for the San Juan Unified School District. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. So you Everybody. are a math teacher at Rio Americano High School. Yes. What levels uh, of math do you teach? Um, I teach I am one. No, I did teach I am one. I'm teaching now I'm two plus, I'm three plus, and I'm three. So that's integrated math. I guess kind of mixed algebra one, geometry, and algebra two. And the grade levels from nine through 12. Looks okay, so you touch on every level. So how do you work with students to convince them that they do have a math mindset, that they should not be intimidated by math? Yes, you're so right. The math is a fearful subject for most students. And uh, first of all, uh, I tried to tell them that math didn't do anything to them. <laughs> okay, it wasn't math's fault that they fear it. And then we tried to break things down. I use a lot of mental math tricks. I teach them couple. So I go back into something that they know or they think they know. They know how to multiply a certain way. And here I am showing them, like, do you want to learn how to do this within three seconds? Mm -hmm. And they're like, of course, yeah. They get excited about it. And I'm like, this is what happens. It's, this is what math is. Not that some people are just naturally smart in math. It's just that they got some tricks in their minds that you don't know. But here I am to teach you those tricks mm -hmm. so you can actually understand math too. So math is not an ice cream to like or dislike. It just has to be understood because it's gonna help you in life a lot. To make your life actually easier, that's the whole point of math. So what is it like, what is the feeling you get when you have a student who's fearful at the beginning of the year, but by the end they feel confident with, with math? There's so many of them come back and say like, thank you so much. It's because we're fearful of math because of those mistakes. But math designed to make mistakes. You almost like you cannot not make a mistake solving math problems. I make mistakes, but the, if we can just just get that in our minds that we have to just go back and fix those mistakes, we're good to go. Because we learn by practicing until we make no mistakes anymore. So we made mistakes, we just have to cry for a little bit about it, just for a second or two, not more than that. And then as we, then we look at that mistake, we try to understand why we made that mistake, and usually goes like, oh, I knew what to do, but it was just a little thing. Mm -hmm. And then we fix that little thing practice not making that little mistake and then yes here it is we understand it we know how to solve things we naturally get excited of, of learning and math is the one that we can and we understand it's hard and as soon as we learn it and now we're like oh my gosh look I couldn't do this problem now I can solve them now they're not as scary anymore now we can actually take this problem and step by step get to the answer and getting the right answer is the best feeling ever. They all want to know, is this right? Did I do it correctly? Yes, you did. And that becomes that point where we're like, math is not as bad as you thought, huh? Mm -hmm. Like, oh yeah. But I feel like we program almost some of our students or children not to like math. There's a my math mindset in the English. No, 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 no. Math is like washing dishes. You do it every single day again and again and again. Well, and that's what I was going to ask you. What are you, you're dealing with a lot of students who probably say, how am I ever going to use this in my life? And you, you have to explain to them the practical of, application. Of course. And it's not about them equations running in the middle of the road in five years. Nothing like that. It's about facing the problem. And again, I cannot predict all the problems that they might experience in life. What I'm teaching them right now is, look at this, big math problem. We didn't know how to solve. We didn't see the answers. Nobody does. But if we chunk it up, step by step, oh my gosh, in a few more steps, we got to the answer. So that's how life works. Because even if I share with my experience, my problems, they're going to have different ones. But the strategies we use to solve those problems, they're about the same. So you're teaching critical thinking. Yes. It's more about... So it's not about, oh, what am I going to use these sine functions in real life? I don't use them either. I just <laughs> know because I have to teach. teach yeah. Yeah, yeah, I just have to know because I'm teaching it. But the logic behind it, 
the ability to see the pattern, ability to recognize the trend, ability to judge at that moment. If you like the trend, continue. If you don't like it, what can you do to change it, switch it? Is there anything you can do to solve the problem, that impossible hard problem? And to make it like, again, maybe not the full problem you're gonna be able to solve, but as much as you can. So that's what math teaches. Math is not about just adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing. I mean, don't get me wrong, we do that too. Mm. But it's all about that approach. And we're not just making stuff up either. It's not about I like it to be too, me too, but what is the answer? Are you using the definition? Are you using the facts? Are you using the previously proven theorems? It's just how are you getting to that answer? Or it's just, you know, it's not just, your opinion. Mm -hmm. I just want it to be like that. I mean, it doesn't work like that. Math doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. So how important is it uh, for you to get as much professional development as you can? Uh, because while math is the same, but there are different ways to teach it, there's different instruction, there's different <laughs> technique. I, I, I'm, I think I'm not the best person, I think, for professional development as much. I'll explain you why. When I was, um, I just started teaching, I went through a lot of them and uh, I learned that that means that I have to leave the class for a substitute and go somewhere else, try to learn techniques. I understand this, yes, I like it. But what I, over the years, this is my 10th, 11th year of teaching, will be 11th year of teaching, I learned that the more I work with my students and develop those techniques, they're the ones that tell me what they struggle with. And this is how I get those strategies. Um, it's, Interesting, but I, I couldn't, I tried. I, yeah, I can read about your experience, your strategies that you used in order to make your students successful. But my students are different. And that means that I have to find the strategies that help these current students. I even can use my own strategies next year teaching the same math. You're learning from dealing different. with those different students. You're yes. learning from students. And they're so unique and so different. They do have some commonalities that I sort of started the approach, but they're also so unique that, that the, the approaches needs to be different, and it's unfortunately, it's almost like when, when I go to professional development, yeah, I'm listening, yes, yeah, this is the way you did, but the bottom line is I have to come back to my class and, and not wasting time to try to get them to that proficiency level that I'm trying to get them, and they're the ones that best teachers to that. If they don't tell me what they struggle with, their fear is, what they didn't understand, I have no idea how to teach the next day or how to reteach the same concept. Mm -hmm. So I get the most professional development from my own students. That's interesting. Final question, what does it mean to you to be named as a teacher of the year for your district? Um, I, I told my students I didn't choose to be, they're the ones, it's their fault. <laughs> and, uh, but when I did get the teacher of the year nomination, I feel like this is a celebration of my students. Because if that wasn't for them, there's no way I would have been here. Because they're the ones that helped me to become a teacher I am. They're the ones that had to be brave enough to ask me those questions, be patient enough with me to come up with a different strategy, or allow me to reteach them and not to give up on me. Mm -hmm. And I feel like this nomination is more like celebration of my students. Also, I guess it's almost like show the world what we do every single day, and I don't just, you know, click the, push the button on the PowerPoint and they just have to copy and study and give the test. It's hard work, but it's worth every minute of it, what we do, what we do every single day. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm honored. I don't know if that's gonna change the way I teach or not. I don't think so. I hope, I, I'm not sure, I'm thinking about what will that do? How can I use this? later to teach better, maybe to help more of my students to be successful in life. If they see it as one of the you know, goals, even though that was never my goal, maybe that's one of the ways to highlight a success, that would be awesome. I'm gonna use it to push them, mm -hmm. you know, to have that goal in their life and, and do whatever it takes for them to just be the most successful as they can be, reach their potential, but it's in an, it is an honor, but I'm still in the process of what does that mean? Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. fully to me or what's going to be next or how will that change the, the teaching next year? I'm not sure yet. Well, I guess we'll find it. Well, congratulations Thank to you. you. We've been speaking with Svetlana Popov, who is one of two teachers of the year for the San Juan Unified School District. Thank you for joining us. You're welcome. Thank you.